Hello, I'm Johnny Rouge, aka Carolina, and welcome to this two-part video series titled Recreating Van Gogh's Starry Night Over the Rhone. Hello, I hope you're all well and staying safe and healthy. Welcome to part one of this video series. In this particular video, I'm going to be going through all the background research and preparation that went into preparing for the actual painting of Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night Over the Rhone. As a bit of background, I wanted to do this project as a means of pushing myself to get back into painting. When I was younger, I used to paint quite a lot, but then stopped suddenly and never really returned to it. I figured that challenging myself with trying to recreate a well-known painting would provide me with the opportunity to learn some new techniques and styles. This challenge included thorough research of the painting and of Van Gogh's technique in order to recreate the work as faithfully as possible. Ultimately though, it was a super fun and engaging experiment and learning opportunity, and I'm excited to share with you what I as an amateur painter did to accomplish it. I would be curious to hear if you have any critiques or suggestions on how to improve the process for next time. Van Gogh painted Starry Night Over the Rhone in 1888, and it is one of two Starry Nights he created in his lifetime. Despite the other Starry Night painted in 1889 being more famous, I find this one more appealing in composition and color. Uh, to me, although the more famous Starry Night is revered for its beautiful bright blue swirls and landscape, to me it represents a painful time in Van Gogh's life, as he had already been committed to the Asylum of St. Paul de Mossol for mental health issues and had painted it from his hospital room's window. This earlier 1888 Starry Night, on the contrary, seems to exude more calming colors and tone, and seems to represent a happier time in the artist's life. Just to give you an idea of the different painting equipment I used uh, in order to paint uh, the Starry Night, um, I had uh, purchased uh, some gesso, um, just simple white, um, good for oil and acrylic. So that was used um, to be able to prime the canvas, especially that it started off as a wooden board with uh, a print on top, so I needed to smooth that out. Um, in terms of the brushes, I used a co combination of these um, flat and broad um, brushes for the cross hatching and then for some of the more intricate um, textures um, and details I used uh, these kinds of uh, smaller brushes. Nothing too fancy, just brushes I've had for ages and uh, was able to pick out a couple of these um, to be able to do the painting itself. Um, obviously this is not the entirety of all the colors I used, but uh, just to provide an idea of what I was using. Um, as you can see, I was using Duo Aqua Oil, um, so this is water soluble oil paints. Uh, very early on I realized that I would like to avoid using uh, oil paints. Um, or full oil paints, um, just because I didn't have a good enough space for ventilation and I was trying to avoid using um, the more toxic solvents. Um, so I opted for something that was a little easier, user friendly, and um, a little less hazardous, to my understanding at least, um, such as these um, water soluble paints. So these, this one just happens to be uh, Alizarin Crimson. And this one is ultramarine deep, but uh, I had a whole set of them uh, that I used um, that I will actually show you in a moment in terms of uh, the the testing of different colors that I I, uh, I did. So you'll be able to see all the different hues and uh, shades that I had purchased for this painting. Um, and then lastly but not least, I have the linseed oil, but again this one uh, needed to be water soluble oil to be able to um, go with the, uh, the water soluble oil paints. Um, it's possible that regular linseed oil might have worked and actually in fact I had originally bought it thinking that was the case, but uh, my understanding is that uh, in order to optimize the use of the water soluble oil paints you need to have linseed oil that is also water soluble. So that's 
roughly what I used to be able to uh, paint this painting. This is the canvas I've selected. Um, it's a print on a wooden surface and frame. Uh, it's just laid down so that I can prep it more easily. I am not the biggest fan of the design, which is why I am uh, painting it over. Uh, so I'm sorry to anybody who, who does enjoy it. <laughs> Okay, so the next part I wanted to show you was how I tested the paint color before starting to actually paint. I recreated the surface of my canvas by gessoing this little wooden board. The four rows of colors you see here were the different paint colors mixed with different media. The top row has no medium as a baseline. The second row I added linseed oil before I remember that my water soluble oil paints needed to be mixed with a medium that is also water soluble. The third row was just an experiment with water which is definitely not recommended. And the bottom row was the water soluble linseed oil which is what I ultimately mixed into my paints for this project. I used pretty much all these pigments at some point in the painting but less of the bright ones in the middle. In any case, this wooden board became a great guide for me to glance at whenever I wasn't sure of what paint to match with my reference photos. I had two photos I referred to during this project. The larger was great to use while I was painting because it was big enough for me to see the details and colors and paint strokes. But because it was printed over two pages like you can see here, it was more difficult to calculate the dimensions and proportions, so I used this smaller one instead. I traced it and split it into a 9 square grid to use as a guide for drawing the lines on my larger canvas. In terms of further research on how to approach this painting, I spent some time looking at Van Gogh's techniques online, some resources of which I will link below. And last but not least, I primed the canvas uh, using gesso, three layers of it, and a brush that was much bigger than the ones that I would shown in the other uh, part of the video. Uh, so with that, ta-da! That is what I did to prepare for the painting of this project. So that's the end of part one of the video series for this painting challenge. I hope you enjoyed it and please let me know what you think. If you would like to see part two, please click the link below. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye bye!